Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched Trolls World Tour. Let's talk about it. This is one of the first films that DreamWorks has released under its new owner, Universal Studios, but the first film came out actually under Fox. So in light of that, I was pretty interested to see if there'd be any changes when it comes to the feel of this film, considering DreamWorks is now under Universal as opposed to Fox. But that's not the only interesting thing about this film, because this is, of course, the very first film to debut worldwide on demand, as opposed to in cinemas, because of course, cinemas are now closed due to the coronavirus situation. Now we're going to be talking about my thoughts on this film as well as my thoughts on its online release but before we get to that you guys have a job to do and that is to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so you can catch new uploads. Also just know that before we get into this this is going to be a spoiler review so I'm going to be talking about the specifics of what happens in this film although I'm not going to delve into it too much I mean it's a kids film after all. Without further ado let's get into my review. So first off when it comes to the Trolls franchise I actually wasn't that familiar with it and actually the first time that I watched Trolls was a couple of days ago when I realized that I actually hadn't seen the first movie <laughs> before reviewing the second one but I have to say I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed this film the previous one that is it's so much fun I love the soundtrack it's definitely like a jukebox musical where there's just a ton of songs well-known songs that you can just pop your head to and enjoy and there's definitely a lot of you know pop music in that first film which they kind of adapt in this one which we'll get into but I had a fun time with that one it was pretty simplistic just in terms of the basic story arcs and the characters themselves but at the same time they gave these trolls so much personality and so much likability that it actually made it a pretty cool film to watch and that definitely elevated its status from the bottom tier DreamWorks films which I thought initially it would belong in so fast forward a few days later when I was watching the sequel and I have to say that I had pretty much the same thoughts I was pleasantly surprised once again because I found it to be a very enjoyable film. It was very entertaining, perfect for this time, especially if you have kids in the house. I think it's a perfect kids movie. And it's also a film that is bearable to watch if you're an adult. So first of all, let's talk about the animation. I was actually really, really happy with the animation that I saw on screen. And if there's anything that I'm upset about when it comes to this whole home release strategy is that people won't be able to see the animation on the big screen because I definitely think it deserved it. There is some spectacular spectacular use of texture and colouring in this film is just so pleasant to look at and they even experiment with the types of animation that they use and the aesthetics of that animation as they travel across the land of different musical genres. One of the ones that really stood out to me was the techno genre. I thought that whole scene looked so cool. And then of course you have that weird psychedelic adventure that they go on with the jazz musician and you see these 2D cutouts of like real life human beings and animals and it's just so cool how that that's integrated into the animation. I thought that was a really fun way of making it different and making it feel more unique and enjoyable. And if there's one thing that I am constantly, constantly talking about on this channel is the fact that I love ingenuity and uniqueness when it comes to animation, because I feel like a lot of the time the animation that we get these days is just a bit mundane and a bit same old, same old. But while there's definitely a lot of ingenuity and imagination when it comes to the animation, that's not to say that the characters reflect that. First of all, you have the return of Poppy and Branch who had a really cool story in the first film and they're now friends and they're together and happy and everything is fine and dandy sunshine and rainbows and all of that because that's what the trolls world definitely looks like and that's what Poppy emulates and then of course you have Branch who's embraced that a little bit more but I did like the fact that they didn't completely erase his character even after they had the happily ever after he definitely has a bit more of an edge to his personality than Poppy and I think that's a true reflection of his character from the first film film just a bit hyped up a bit more sunshine and rainbowy than he was then but when it comes to the character of Poppy I will say she is a bit more bland than any other character in this film is definitely a bit of an irritating character to follow just because she's so constantly happy and also constantly naive and so convinced that her way is the only way that people should follow and whilst I did enjoy the messaging of this film which we'll talk about in a second I did think it was a bit difficult to follow her on this journey at times when she was just so convinced that she was in the right when everyone else <laughs> was telling her that she was in the wrong in terms of the other characters in the background I think this franchise has done a really 
good job of creating these side characters that are really really funny but don't overstay their welcome there's a ton of new characters here i especially enjoyed hickory who's voiced by sam rockwell who can we talk about this for a second this voice cast is insane it's insane there's mary j blige there's sam rockwell like all of these incredible a-list celebrities are in this film i don't know how like if this was a live action movie with this cast are you kidding That'd be insane. Anyways, like I said, I really enjoyed the side characters in this film. I think they just help flesh out the overall world of the film and make it feel complete and make it feel like it's, you know, three dimensional and everything's happening around the character of Poppy and it's not just her. That's a remarkable character. You could follow any of these guys on their own journeys and I think that's pretty cool. And of course, in any good story, you're going to have a good villain. And here we have the character of Barb, who is a rock and roll troll. And she believes that the only way to unite all of the trolls from all of the different musical genre lands is by making everyone a rock and roll troll as well. So she's out on this mission to collect these strings and to bring them all together and turn them into rock and then everyone else will be a rock troll. I don't know how the specifics work and I don't think that they matter that much but what does matter is that we have a villain and I think she's a pretty good villain as well. I like the fact that she is unapologetically stubborn in her ways just as much as Poppy is. They're kind of a mirror version of each other and the film does a good job of exploring that fact that Poppy is no better than Barb herself because she has this very same belief that everyone needs to be the same in order to be united but of course that is proven and wrong. Which brings me to the thing that I really enjoyed about this film the most and that was its overall messaging because whilst it was communicated in a rather shallow and childish way it's a kids film after all. I very much enjoyed the messaging of overcoming prejudice due to differences as well as rejecting the idea that the only way that everyone can be united is if they're the same. And like I said the way that this message is communicated is pretty shallow but just in terms of actually getting kids to understand that even though you might have have differences with someone else it doesn't mean that the only way you can be united the only way that you can sing in harmony is if you're exactly the same speaking of singing there's a lot of that in this film and I love the fact that they actually explore different musical genres I love the fact that they called out pop music <laughs> several times in this film a lot of the other genres weren't the biggest fans of pop and that's understandable that's kind of a real life thing as well is that pop is often shunned even though it's popular music but everyone loves to hate on it I think they chose some pretty interesting genres to explore here you have classical you have reggaeton you have k-pop you have it's a pretty good variety and I think in a lot of ways it does actually feel like a world tour although if I was to give any criticism I would say the lack of afro beats worrying troubling I'm surprised they could have just dipped their toe into an afro beat or so just to make it feel a bit more world rounded and a bit more worldly there are definitely some genres of music that have more of a spotlight than others I think ultimately pop is still the vibe of this film just because you know it's for kids and Trolls 1 was definitely a very poppy type situation so I didn't expect them to go full-on R&B full-on rock full-on anything it was kind of like a, a medium way of introducing Introducing, dipping their toe into other genres and in terms of the different trolls themselves and their individual worlds I think they built that up very nicely I think the world building in this film is pretty good I remember saying in my review of Onward that the world building there was pretty restrictive and it was very much focused on the characters as opposed to the world that they existed in which was necessary for that film because it was building the bond between the brothers etc etc but in the case of this film because it's a sequel we already know the characters were pretty familiar with the way that they are already and in fact they take a bit more of a back seat in this film and it's all about exploring these different worlds and I think it's a pretty cool concept and I think it was executed very very well and lastly one thing that really made the Trolls movie stand out beyond any other animated film the year that it came out was the song can't stop the feeling was just it was drilled into everyone's mind i think it was worse than let it go from frozen because it had this general appeal that it wasn't specifically tied to the trolls movie and in fact when i watched trolls again for the first time a couple of days ago i'd forgotten i didn't even realize that it was in this film so yeah that song was huge that song was insanely popular and i have to say that i don't think there's anything in this 
sequel that could even come close to the popularity of Can't Stop the Feeling. Although unlike Frozen there aren't many original tracks from the Trolls movies to begin with. Although I did happen to spot that Ludwig Göransson is a musical executive on this film which makes me very excited because he is one of my favourite composers working today. I just want him to have all the success in the world. Even though this is a jukebox musical I think the renditions of these popular songs was really good. So overall I had a fun time with Trolls World Tour. It's definitely a kids film like it skews younger. It's not quite as cerebral as a Pixar movie or as zany and edgy as the DreamWorks of old but this is what DreamWorks is doing now. They're definitely skewing younger and they have been for a few years now other than the How to Train Your Dragon franchises which has always been a very universally appealing franchise. And speaking of Universal in terms of the direction of DreamWorks under them I'm very interested to see what that will look like with an original project as opposed to a sequel which we won't be getting for a while because the next few DreamWorks films coming up are going to be sequels. But as a sequel to Trolls I think it's pretty much on the same level as the original film but it still does a great job of exploring the central characters and giving Poppy a bit more of an arc this time whilst at the same time exploring the wider world that it's building and creating these fun new characters to follow along with. And as a result I'm going to be giving Trolls World Tour a 7 out of 10. Like I said before I think it is a shame that we likely won't be able to see this film in cinemas because I think it is very well animated and it would have made for a beautiful viewing experience not to mention the money that's been left on the table here oh I can only imagine how the DreamWorks executives are feeling right now because the reason why we even have a second Trolls is because the first one made money honey. <laughs> it certainly wasn't the most financially successful DreamWorks film at the box office but it did make a decent chunk of change at the box office not to mention the tons and tons of money that it probably made from its soundtrack. But that's not even taking into account the drama between Universal Studios and some of these theatre owners who are saying that they will remember the fact that Universal chose to date view this film online. I don't even know what that means because having films in cinemas is a mutually beneficial arrangement for both the studios and the cinemas but I'm guessing they're holding a grudge this time round because Universal basically kicked them whilst they're already down. But it doesn't seem like other studios will be following suit because a lot of them have just chosen to push their release dates forward as opposed to releasing any films online straight away. Apart from Artemis Fowl which will be debuting on Disney Plus and no one really cares about that anyway so that's fine. But, but needless to say this is pretty unprecedented and it's a pretty interesting situation. I'm so curious to see how much money Universal actually made from releasing this online. Did people take the bait? Did they just want to entertain their kids by any means necessary and paid the bill to do so? Because this pretty much costs about the same as a Netflix subscription for a whole month which has tons of films on there. So now that I've told you guys my thoughts on Trolls World Tour as well as its online release it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of the movie down in the comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up. Thank you guys so so much for watching. I really really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!